If you are watching this video, it means you are eager to learn Snowflake Snowpark for Python and looking for an end-to-end hands-on guide that covers its features in a systematic manner. In this video, we will explore whether Snowflake's official content for Snowpark Python offers an end-to-end -end guide that takes you through the entire learning journey and does it really help you to learn Snowpark starting from architecting and designing followed by development activities followed by testing approach and approaches to productionize either the data engineering workload or machine learning workload as a client server architecture or a completely server based architecture. So stay tuned until the end of this short and informative video to discover the resources that will help you to master Snowflake Snowpark for Python. Welcome back to my channel Data Engineering Simplified and to this everything about Snowpark playlist for true data professional and data engineers like you. And in this episode, episode 4, you will find the answer if there is any good Snowpark end-to-end -end tutorial available for data engineers for all levels starting from beginner to expert. So let's start. Please follow this instruction to have a better visual experience and learn this content faster. We have already finished three episodes in this playlist. We are going to discuss many different topics related to Snowpark. You can pause the video, review the topic and jump to a specific episode if that interests you. Links for all the videos can be found in the description section or above in the info icon. Before we proceed, I have a quick announcement. I have published more than 100 videos covering different topic under different playlist. If you find it hard to get into a specific topic or a subtopic or a concept, refer this summary card or a cheat sheet. Download instructions are available in the description section. For additional queries or specific questions, feel free to drop a note to my Instagram account. Let's dive into Snowflake's official documentation for Snowpark Python developers. The documentation includes a page dedicated to Snowpark API which provides quick start guides for various workloads such as machine learning as well as data engineering pipeline. It also covers Snowpark Python integration with Streamlight and discusses differences between Spark connector versus Snowpark. The page includes code snippets, examples and highlights key benefits. Additionally, you will find links to the developer guide and API documentation. Here you will find a Snowpark developer guide for Python. Let's go inside it. In this page, it is start with get started where it helps you to set up your development environment followed by creating a session using Snowpark Python library. And then it also has sample code for using the data frame in Snowpark Python, using user defined function and many more important links. However, it is worth noting that the guide is relatively small and lacks extensive examples, making it challenging to grasp complex data engineering transformations and what method from Snowpark module can be used for different use cases. So you need to discover many things by yourself. Next, we will talk about Snowpark's Python API reference guide. Since Snowpark is built on the top of Snowflake Python connector, you can refer to the entire API documentation from this link. The code base is much smaller as Snowpark primarily convert your code into an equivalent SQL that runs on Snowflake. This enables you to leverage the powerful Snowflake platform while enjoying ease and flexibility of Python. So these are the modules under which you will find multiple classes, attributes and methods which you would use it for different use cases. If you are a person who can read the API documentation, understand the examples and code snippet given in them maybe then it is a great thing. However, many of their modules and methods lack suitable examples. So you would really find it little hard to consume those methods unless otherwise you come from PySpark or Spark background. Let's talk about Snowflake's quick start guide. So this quick start guide is not specific to Snowpark. You can apply different filter. Let's say I am going to choose a particular filter. I can go and choose data engineering and you can see I have a cybersecurity, connectors, DevOps, features, getting started and partner integration. And if I search for the keyword Snowpark, 
you see there are a couple of snowpark examples available so this is data engineering pipeline with snowpark python and here data engineering with snowpark python and dbt and getting started with data engineering and machine learning using snowpark there are a couple of moves however, they will give you a flavor of snowpark however it doesn't enable you to become a proficient data engineer using the snowpark api libraries and if i click on this it has all the descriptions available including sample data file and you can really practice it and become more familiar how the snowpark works using python library let's talk about snowpark python change log if you would like to know the latest stable version and the feature and bug fixes provided by snowflake this link will be helpful for you so this is change log page and at the time of recording the version of snowpark python is 1.4.0 and all the new features which are included as a part of 1.4.0 is listed here. So as a Snowpark developer, it is important for you to keep track of this change log to make sure that you are fully aware of the changes what is being applied to the Snowpark. It looks like they have been releasing on a monthly basis. So we know at what frequency Snowflake is upgrading Snowpark and more and more features are added to the Snowflake more and more modules or enhancement would happen to the snowpark library it is hard to know how much to learn to get a good confidence to manage any enterprise grade data engineering project using snowpark library none of the documentation talks deeply about how to debug or how to test or how to deploy the snowpark packages in governed manner and as for the current version of snowpark 1.4 and if i see the api documentation it lacks a lot of real world examples if you are working in any standard data engineering project and building solutions using snowpark python library these are the modules will be used very frequently the snowpark session is your first library that has close to 30 plus methods data frame has a three broader classes and 100 plus methods inside that the function module has 200 plus methods window module has 16 plus functions grouping module has two main classes and 10 plus functions exceptions are having close to 22 plus methods and context is having only one method if you are reading a lot of files from local runtime environment or outside snowflake runtime then you may use input output module that will also be used frequently input output module has five important classes and 22 plus methods column module has two major classes and 44 plus methods data types are having close to 25 plus methods row table function table and async job modules are having four three eight and four methods respectively when it comes to advanced feature where you would like to deploy stored procedures udf utdf and, and observability functions you will have a handful of method inside them right so this is the list of all modules and their attributes and methods as per snowpark python 1.4 so if you sum all of them they are close to 500 methods under different modules and the kind of example provided or shared by snowflake documentation is not good enough to apply them in a real life project there is plethora of ad hoc content available on the internet to learn snowpark but it can be quite disorganized or focused on a specific topic. It is challenging to gather all of them under one umbrella. If you prefer learning from my channel, I have couple of engaging clips that closely align with what a data engineer does day in and day out. The first playlist features sample code from end-to-end -end data engineering projects demonstrating how to write a snowpark code. I am continuously adding new videos to this playlist with each video being around an hour long. Another playlist focuses on a specific problem statement such as establishing a connection or understanding the difference between table API versus data frame API. These videos provide problem centric solutions allowing you to pick and watch based on your current interest. If you want to have a general awareness about Snowpark and the related technology and its competitor, you can also watch my playlist called Everything About Snowpark. So if you are interested to learn Snowpark, and wants to gain a hands-on experience, you can watch this space and subscribe to this channel so you will get the notification when I publish a new video on Snowpark. Alternatively, you can also visit my blog page and find the article related to Snowpark or 
or end to end data engineering project using Snow Park. Additionally, I am working on a cheat sheet that captures code snippet from different modules, enabling you to be more efficient in your Snow Park development and Snowflake journey. journey. If you have found a good learning resource elsewhere, feel free to share it in the comment section so that we all can benefit from each other's knowledge and accelerate our snowpark learning journey together thank you for watching this episode from this playlist if you have learned something valuable from this episode don't forget to press on the like button and share with other data engineers and snowflake developers the next chapter will be very very interesting chapter we are going to discuss how a sql developer having no programming background can learn snowpark don't forget to watch the next episode Episode 5 Can a Snowflake Developer, Can a SQL Developer Learn Snowpark? Happy learning and keep growing.